glory hog, credit seeker, spotlight grabber, brown noser, whatever you call them, we all know the type. I'm Michael Quinn Sullivan with a reflection on life and liberty. There are people who like to overstate the value of their work, and they like to take, you know, creative license in describing their contributions to a group effort. The political landscape of our allies is littered with those people. Worse, though, is the class of people who loudly seek credit for something they didn't do. We find a lot of them inhabiting public office. When the truth emerges, as it always does, most people will just roll their eyes at the politician. At worst, the politician's propensity for fabrications costs them an election. <laughs> but it could be a lot worse for them. Consider the fate of the unnamed Amalekite that we meet in the first chapter of the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel. This fellow must have thought himself a genius. Let me back up here. The last chapter in 1 Samuel describes how King Saul was in a fierce battle. All three of his sons were killed by the Philistines. Not wanting to be captured or humiliated by his enemies, Saul ordered his servant to kill him. The man refused, so Saul fell on his own sword. A few days later, a young Amalekite wandered into the camp of David. He brought with him two things, Saul's crown and a good story. Now, you have to know, like this young man knew, that Saul had made David an enemy of the state. Saul knew that David should be the king, but since Saul was the king, he wasn't eager to give up the throne. So the young man told David that he killed Saul out of mercy to protect the king from being disgraced by the Philistines. And as a bonus, he preserved the crown for David. The man no doubt expected to be patted on the back. He was probably certain that David would appreciate the man who so kindly dispatched Saul and thus vacated the throne. Instead, David ordered the man's execution on the spot. David hadn't sought power, and he didn't want it on dishonorable terms. The man wanted credit for something he hadn't done and received the punishment as if he had. As someone craving the approval of others, the man had mistaken David's divine appointment with royalty with a craven desire for power. Just as it did 3,000 years ago, governing power draws egomaniacs and sycophants. Today, it's our responsibility to weed both out of public office. As sovereign citizens in the self-governing republic, we must be on guard against those seeking the accolades of public office and instead promote those willing to serve the interests of the people. If you like today's Reflections podcast, be sure to subscribe, rate it, leave a review, and encourage your friends to listen. The Reflections podcast is presented by Texas Scorecard, and today's edition was produced in the 1836 studios by Nick Shepard. I'm Michael Quinn Sullivan. Thanks for listening. <laughs>